Now that we know how to make Java web applications using the MVC design pattern, we need to discuss some better techniques for keeping up with our data to make sure it persists and to actively manage the state of the objects in our application. This is the first of several videos which will cover some of these techniques. In this video, we will understand the stateless nature of the HTTP protocol. We'll learn the meaning of persistence and state management, especially as they pertain to web applications. And we will list some of the techniques for handling persistence and state management with web applications. First, let's define a stateless protocol. From Wikipedia, we can find that a stateless protocol is any communications protocol that treats each request as an independent transaction that is unrelated to any previous request so that the communication consists of independent pairs of requests and responses. A stateless protocol does not require the server to retain session information or status about each communications partner for the duration of multiple requests. In contrast, a protocol which requires the keeping of internal state is known as stateful protocol. So the requests and responses to our web applications are sent via the HTTP protocol. It turns out that HTTP is one of those stateless protocols. This means that any data received or created during one request response cycle is not available for the next request response cycle unless we actively work to make the data persist. Let's think about that for a moment. Our web application will be triggered by a request from the client over HTTP protocol. When the web server receives this request, it will immediately create two objects, the request and the response object. Recall the request object will include any data that is provided by the client with the request. And the response object will be used to create the response to be sent back to the client. Because we're using the MVC design pattern, we'll usually have a servlet created to handle the request. So both the request and the response objects will be available to our servlet and any data on the request or the response can be used by that servlet. The servlet may use Java classes that are included in our model. Once the servlet is complete, decide what's to needs done and use the model classes to process the data, control will be passed to a JSP. The request and response object that were created upon receiving the request will be passed along so that the JSP can use those. And the JSP will create a response, possibly using the model, that will be returned to the client and shown in the client's view. Because HTTP is stateless, once the response is sent to the client, the request and the response objects that were created upon the initial request, they will be destroyed by the server. The server has no memory of that request and response. The next time the client sends a request, the server will create new request and response objects, entirely different request and response objects than those before. We need to look at a couple important terms. Data persistence. This is the term used in computing to refer to the time over which data is valid. We saw that any data provided at a request only persist within a current request response cycle. State. An object-oriented program, an object state includes its usual properties such as the methods that it includes plus the current value of its fields. So often because we're working in object-oriented programming we want the state of an object to persist over time. So the term state management covers any of those techniques where we actively manage the state of an application's objects and data, especially when it's not automatically managed by the server. So in this set of videos we're going to look at some Java web application state management techniques. These will include servlet initialization parameters. These are used to initialize servlet objects. They may persist as long as the servlet survives. Request attributes. These are available within one request response cycle. For slightly longer persistence, we might use session attributes. These are available throughout a session. We'll see that a session begins with the first request from a client and ends once the client is no longer visiting our application. 
Cookies. Cookies can be available over multiple sessions. And finally, for long-term persistence, we'll have server-side storage, such things as databases and files. This is for very long-term persistence. In the next few videos, we'll explore each of these techniques in turn. So in this video, we introduced state management and how to actively work with that. We discussed the stateless nature of the HTTP protocol. We learned the meaning of persistence, state, and state management. And we listed some of the techniques for handling persistence and state management in our web applications. This has been a Piercy production.